News. 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 New York City. FAQ NYC podcast getting more and more interesting by the minute. FAQ. It's FAQ NYC. I'm Harry Siegel here with Katie Onan, catching up on another truly jam packed week in New York City while Christina Greer takes a breath. We'll go, Katie. Hey, Harry. Hey. So, since we last recorded, like, everything happened all at once again. So, Eric Adams addressed the press about the FBI raid of his chief fundraiser. He said he didn't do anything wrong. This is on Wednesday. Um, no one on his team had been informed they were a target of the probe. And in fact, he, he made sure to always tell everyone to always do everything the right way. Then on Friday, two days after that, New York Times broke the news that on Monday, so two days before Adams spoke to the press, FBI agents had come up to him outside an event and been like, give me your phones and an iPad. Uh, and he did. All this seems to be, from reporting now, revolving around um, Turkey, uh, President Erdogan, a building his family, in effect, uh, was putting up through a nonprofit in Midtown. Uh, and Adams helping as mayor elect to pave the way for that building to open on time. Farage wanted to give a speech there, even though this was in Midtown and he was, you know, at the time the Brooklyn borough president. So Team Adams is objecting to the leaks now. Uh, surrogates are arguing in the post. This is all just ordinary constituent service. It's a lot to track, but like the, the upshot is the feds seem to be closing in on the mayor of New York City. He has to speak in the court of public opinion. While, you know, he has lawyers now, he's hired. Uh, the campaign is also covering the uh, fundraiser who doesn't seem to have a personal lawyer yet. It all seems confusing and difficult and suspended at this point where we find out where this investigation goes, if it leads to charges or anything else. And Katie, you've been all over this. You talked to the mayor over the weekend. So maybe you can start with uh, what he's saying now, and then we can zoom out to uh, what this means for the city and uh, right now. And the political implications going forward as this seems to reshuffle the deck. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll start just with the most recent. Yeah. The mayor went to the Flight 587 Memorial in Rockaway Park yesterday, which I go to mostly every year anyway. Um, and interestingly, you know, if you recall, not to go too deep, but in 2014, de Blasio arrived famously very late to it, made up lots of excuses, lied initially about why he was late and kind of never lived it down. And Mayor Adams didn't go last year because he was in Somos. He comes, you know, on time this year. But then as Congressman Espeada is speaking, he just gets up to leave, right? Which I actually was naively shocked that he would leave, in, not in the middle, but maybe about 75% of the way through before, you know, at the end, all the families go up to the memorial and put flowers next to their loved ones' names. And usually, the you know, the mayors interact with people. So um, Bernadette Hogan from New York One and I, you know, asked the mayor about this stuff and his spokesperson tried to kind of brush us off and I was shushed by, but you know, that's, I, I was very calm because I wanted to react very negatively to it. But his whole thing was, yeah, the, the user, my, this is what I did as borough president. Um, I guess, sure. You, you try to help constituents, but um, it was a Manhattan building. And then he really was bemoaning the leaks. Um, I joke that, you know, him and the plumber, they really hate the leaks. So, and that was the official statement that came from Lisa Zornberg, his chief counsel from City Hall, of basically, we're cooperating, we're doing what you want us to do, stop the leaks. And the leaks he were he was referring to were to the, the New York Times and the New York Post, who both reported Friday about, um, I guess, details of this investigation, that it related to helping out this Turkish consulate on First Avenue and 46th Street or so, um, and calls and texts he made to the then Fire Commissioner Daniel Nigro. So all these sort of things going on. Um, yeah, so that was that. And I think the mayor was sort of like, you get asking me these questions on Tuesday. This isn't the appropriate place to ask. Okay, fine. I don't want to ask you at a memorial, especially not in the middle of it, but that's why I was going to wait till the end. Um, a quick pause for two things. Just yeah. Flight 587, for, for those who yeah. don't know was headed to the DR when it crashed and many people died. This was like two months after 9-11. And, uh, you know, there have been memorials and markers for it. And you sense there were all sorts of fears and questions about what happened uh, for obvious reasons at the time. Yeah, and I could just very briefly, I think it was a flight from JFK to Santo Domingo. It, it 
crashed in Bell Harbor soon after. 265 people died. That includes five people on the ground. Um, you know, I think from the start, there's been a lot of hurt feelings from the the, vict- the victim's families because it's like, you know, someone wrote a, a young adult fiction book about sort of involving this, Clap When You Land, I believe it's called. And they consider it like the forgotten plane crash. So you already have people who feel forgotten. Um, the memorial is 12 blocks from where the plane crashed or 15 blocks from where the plane crashed, which gets into whole, you know, Bell Harbor Peninsula. We don't want a memorial here. Maybe they don't want to see grieving Dominicans every year. So that's the other issue. And then they felt deep disrespect from what Bill de Blasio did in 2014. And I'll say too, yesterday, you know, usually they have a program. Went to get a program. Oh, uh, they didn't arrive in time. So we're taking it. No, no. When something doesn't arrive in time, it means we didn't order in time. Right. And I think it's disrespectful. I didn't get the chance to ask any families, but I think it is just it comes off as disrespectful that you get up in the middle of a congressman, a Dominican congressman speaking to leave because you said you have other stuff going on. Okay, the next thing your public schedule was a 1030 radio interview. I think he drove from Rockaway back to City Hall to do it, which is crazy to me. Just do it in your car. You know, you have everything else in your car. Um. I don't know. So that is, you know, the history of that. The the, the official cause was pilot error. Um, anyway, but yeah, so that was what we had. And the mayor then canceled his 1130. Um, he was also dealing with a lot of stuff yesterday. The migrant shelter opened at Floyd Bennett Field. Buses of asylum seekers arrived and then they turned back around and said, I'm not staying here. Um, I That's according to I... the post, right? That was the first load. And then the city's like, yeah, but 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 subsequent uh, uh, bus bus people, some of them did stay. And then they, they added to all this, by the way, you know, the administration, and I believe it was Zach Iskall, um, uh said, you know, like, look, we've said there just isn't space and we're doing what we can and this is it. But like these are plainly very unappealing circumstances for families and to some extent meant to be. Right. And what what what's one parent spoke, I I think it was the post or New York one said, my kid goes to school in the Bronx, you know, like, yeah. do you want to put a kid at probably six in the morning on a bus from Floyd Bennett Field? Um, you know, and I think if the neighboring communities were more open to it and I'm not judging one way or the other as to why they're not. But, yeah, could they go to schools closer to school? Sure. But then it's disruptive to kids. It's November. If if you've had kids who've been in school since September, it's very disruptive. And the mayor, when he was asked about this repeatedly, this is in the the what feels like a lifetime ago before we knew about an FBI raid. He was asked repeatedly about what would happen to not disrupt the kids. And he was like, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um, so there was that. Um, I think, yeah, you asked for the political ramifications. We're not even mentioning the SOMOS conference, which happened, which happened last week, and a lot of people emerging as potential primary challengers. I can also say I spoke to someone from the Adams campaign, you know, on background rights, so I won't name them, but just pretty much saying, and this was, I will say the timing is very, you have to get into the specific timing in which you spoke to people because their opinions or whatever, their message might change. This was before the story about, um, his phone's being seized, right? So this was Friday at like one or one or so. And they were going on and on about how Hazel Dukes, Reverend Al Sharpton, union leaders are really upset by people potentially running for the mayor. And it just seems to just really be delighting. And these are the same people who support clean slate and people are innocent until proven guilty. And, you know, I'll say no one's saying Adam should go to jail. They're just saying, yeah, maybe this is a distraction and this is a good opportunity to run. You know, pulling out this is the person did say to me, this is exactly what ha- this is like what happened with Dinkins. And I said, I'm sorry, I was a little uh, I was a little young when when Dinkins was mayor. I don't recall. Did his top fundraisers home get raided by the FBI, too? I forgot this. But you get into a lot of the messaging that you always get. And this is the same Al Sharpton who's at the White House to try to protect uh, menthol cigarettes, right? Yeah, okay. well, you know I love menthol, so I'm not going to say anything. But um, uh, I, I, I'm also no, I, <laughs> I'm a very rare social smoker. But when it is, I want to smoke a Newport. Anyway, so yeah, that is what we're dealing with. I think I've said a couple weeks ago. This pod is brought to you by Newport. I wish alive right live with Big flavor. <laughs> Wait, if we took the city dot nyc, imagine if we took started taking money, all our money woes would be gone. Um, I'm just kidding. I will say I had said a few weeks ago on the pod, noting how the press office is just so afraid and it's only gotten worse. This sort of I don't blame them. I'd be nervous, too. I don't know what's going on. All this stuff is. And a lot of the questions we asked them, they don't know the answers to. I asked a spokesperson for the mayor for a week on behalf of our colleagues, you know, 
Did the mayor ever meet the Turkish president either as mayor or as borough president? Five days later, he never met him as mayor. I go, you're forgetting the other part that I asked. I was told I have to I have to look through the records. The rec. I was like, can't you just ask him? You know, and then he was asked by our colleague, Gwen Hogan, and, and, and it turned out to be true. So so, so, little- so they had yeah. nearly a week to simply answer the straightforward matter of fact they were going to have to answer. And they waited until the mayor was doing his once a week open questions, which is what Katie was referring to earlier when I, you know, yeah. I guess you can ask him on Tuesday uh, off topic questions, which is itself absurd. He had to acknowledge what you'd asked. Did Adams meet with Erdogan? And the answer was yes. Uh, they met, but it was when Adams was borough president and they weren't specific about when. And they're like, oh, we didn't really talk about much. But you don't want the mayor answering that at his own press conference. It's public information. You're going to have yeah. to give it up. And and that does suggest that I go back and forth on this. Like sometimes I think this is real fastidious cop stuff. And whatever happens, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. And like with Bill de Blasio, there's not going to be any crime in the end, given how tough the Supreme Court has made this for public officials, right? And, and Adams also has the benefit that he's the presumptive mayor when he calls the fire commissioner. Yeah. So he doesn't actually have any authority or power. It's not clear that's going to be in, ends up not being his fire commissioner, right? He's just, hey, I'm a guy who's got a lot of juice now, and I wanted to check with you about this one thing. But th- there does seem to be something on the sloppy side of the ledger in not providing basic answers to basic and answerable questions it, it just uh throws me off about what this uh what this crew is doing and potentially where this is going yeah and then of course it's and i understand there's the, the campaign side there's a city hall side but then it becomes like well did you ask evan oh well did you ask so and so did you ask this and look I, I keep in my head coming up with that very trite ferris bueller quote of like life moves pretty fast if this mayor really and his comms his his genius comms team right who get paid a lot of money uh that was me i'm sorry but yes if they think that i'm gonna me right i but everyone's gonna just sit around and wait once a week to ask him questions when we have news breaking constantly like grow up guys i'm gonna if you got a public schedule i'm gonna show up you know like this is like within the scope of my job To find the mayor and ask him questions like, you know, I know the mayor would love and it's sort of funny when he first became mayor, he 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 really instituted this like no yelling out questions thing, which I think is fine. It's civilized. But I think he wants a very orderly, you know, no, I'm not going to wait for every Tuesday or or last week's case was on a Wednesday for you to, you know, have your walk on music and your staff of people and you start everything up with like a 15 minute monologue and then you pick who gets. No, 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 no. They all learned this. They all learned this from the pandemic. We didn't already have it. and Everything was already moving in that direction. Like you have to wait 20 minutes for me to riff to get around to the stats I have to deliver, but to also give you another topic of the day before you can ask questions. This is me time. It's it's absurd. Yeah. You know, I'll show up wherever, whenever, if I can to, to do what I need to do, which is get answers from the mayor of the city of New York. So that's how I feel. Um, but yeah, and I think a lot of the SOMO speculation, you know, I wasn't down, but the, the the reporting I read from it was, yeah, people were sure chomping at this news and really getting excited and the sense of vulnerability. And um, sure, I think the Adams campaign is finds it offensive, but that's what that's politics. Like he wouldn't do that if there was someone vulnerable. This is it's, you know, it's like a boxing match, right? You You know where people's weak sides are. And then, oh, like if someone starts stumbling, you don't stop punching, you keep punching. So that's what people are looking at. Um, and I, I whether the Andrew some, Yangs, the yeah, Andrew Yangs of the world are showing back up to, to throw cheap shots. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I saw, look who's back, Andrew Yang. Um, isn't he working on his third party with Christy, the heir is fine, Todd Whitman? Um, you know, he runs as a Democrat. He's writing a book about leaving the Democratic Party in the middle of the primaries. Um, and, and his closing appeal, as this is slipping away from him, is, is hey, Adams uh, Adams is pretty corrupt. And he gets nasty about this. And it's not something interesting. We spent a lot of time onto up till that point. So it sort of comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and it's scripted, right? He's got a very strong line. You've hit the rare trifecta of corruption. You've been investigated by the city, the state, and the feds. Yeah, I'm a justice department. But then he goes away and, and leaves the party and, and returns to obscurity after becoming famous by running in the party's primary, sort of hacking that process. So he's tweeting now, you know, I would not 
have flown uh, south of the border for a trip. I would not have the FBI investigating. And it's like, as with nonpartisan elections, which I'm a big believer in, and he's now pushing, like, go away. You're the worst possible messenger avatar for any of this. Yeah. And I'm trying to, in covering this, you know, as a reporter, you can, you read a lot, right? You're constantly inundated with messages. And the thing that's been funny for me is like, when news like this breaks, people start messaging me, like, they just want to talk about it, right? And I'm like, oh, God, please, I'm trying to, like, confirm or get, and it's like, this is crazy. Or it's like, look, here's this thing someone told me I can't, and I'm like, okay, I have to tune a lot of people out. You have to tune yourself, tune out a lot of, like, just the the, the chatter, right? As To quote Mayor Adams, don't listen to the noise or whatever he says. Um, because, yeah, like, we've seen this with Bill de Blasio, there ultimately wasn't enough to charge him with it. I mean, his phones didn't get seized, but there's there's there is some precedent of this happening and, and nothing. And the end not being what people expected it to be. So, you know, as a reporter, we just keep looking at donations, looking at, you know, connections, talking to sources, figuring things out. Um, you know, it was interesting about his phones getting seized on Monday. It was sort of like, why didn't he say it at the Wednesday presser? But I was That's like, look, again. That's the slap again. He knows this is going to come out. He, he has a chance to to speak for himself and yeah. clearly. And he says, we're, we're not a target. We've done everything right. All this stuff. He doesn't mention that his phones were seized. And then when his phones are seized, he has his folks mentioned on the side. We've, after saying no one, I'd be stunned if anyone in my administration did anything wrong. They say, well, we proactively turned over information we've uncovered about one person doing one thing wrong. It just seems sloppy and like I just, wrong-footed. I think now you just have to ask very short pointed questions. Yes. Have your phones been seized? You know, ask his campaign, has your phone been seized? This, that, because when it's in a forum like the, the off topic Tuesday, whatever he says, whether he says the truth or he lies, but you know, again, did we know who would have thought last week? Um, ask him if his phones got seized. I don't know the FBI protocol for all that, but yeah, you have to ask very short pointed questions because that has a yes or no answer and exactly. say yes or no comma. And then the question. Yeah. Did you ever meet with President Erwan? Okay, that has a yes or no question. So that's a that has a yes or no answer. So that's what we're kind of looking at. And yeah, it's I mean, there's all this other news happening too, I think, too, like of, of what else is going on. And we had, you know, I wasn't on the election night pod, but the stuff from that, and you know, I've been really into the Steve Cohen casino plans and what's going on with that. But you kind of have to put all this stuff aside to be in Adam's land and figure out um what what's gonna happen next. And one of one of those Adams investigations, the state one, did involve, and he, he was later scolded in an investigative report. The uh, the last set of uh, casino licenses here, yeah, right at the resorts world. And I had forgotten yeah. a former editor sent a story from 2013 where I guess Adams was on the Shirley Huntley wiretaps too, and he was sort of being looked at um, when he was running for Brooklyn Borough President. Mm -hmm. so, but 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 again, this is the issue with investigations, and it's where Adams, hey, step back. We're cooperating with the process. Let this play out. You have a sense of where things are going. That could feel infuriating. It's also totally fair. It's like an ongoing investigation. We don't know what the claims, if any, mm -hmm. charges, accusations are. Um, and, and having some of this be able to develop more or less in secret so that prosecutors can look at things without demeaning people's uh, reputations. It's like what the whole grand jury system is supposed to be for, to stop them from just being able to arbitrarily charge people. And so they have to go through a lot of this before the press knows all these things when it's done right. Of course, you know, when Rudy was the U.S. attorney, uh, one of the reasons he was beloved by the press is he would share all the stuff you couldn't get without a subpoena with selected members of yeah. the press. And they appreciated that, understandably. Yeah. I, going back to the leaks thing, it's just so funny because everybody leaks. Maybe the mayor is like, well, it's fine if I leak. But these are right. the these are federal investigators. Um, and I guess you don't mind being the leaker, but you don't want to be the leaky. Is is that the correct grammar? You know, you don't want to be no the leak. You don't want to be the one whose info is leaked upon. No, you no, just want to say everyone stop the leaks, and then if you're maybe leaking some version of this to some sympathetic places, um, looking at you post, which had a story that went up before the Times about what this investigation is focused on. Times clearly rushed their story up in response. It also had you know, surrogate quotes from the most sympathetic possible Adams people and that seem to be putting the information out in a way that, that, that was exculpatory. So I could be wrong. These things are tricky. But just as a reader, I'm like, ah, so that one appears to have come from the campaign and they're giving it to the tabloid that endorsed him. 
significantly during the race and has run editorials speculating this is all happening because Biden is trying to punish Adams for saying the truth about migrants, post-truth, not mine yeah. necessarily. Um, oh, but of course, like you play the you play the hand you're dealt. This is what politicians do. And and as information comes out and trickles out, it's hard for you to respond to. You say, I, I demand everyone stops the leaks and respects the process. And that, to the extent it happens, buys time and breathing space and also stops you from having to answer some of these questions when you don't want to. And maybe we'll never have to, depending on where this investigation goes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what we're going to come upon this week. And I also don't know how fast these things move. You know, I've been talking to some people to give a sense of how fast it can move. And even people who should know don't really seem to know. It's not like one thing happens and then boom, we're going to get even more. But I don't know. We, we know we know the, the slow. We know the slow track. We do. We don't know the yeah. fast track. Yeah. We know that this will get resolved before the 2025 election season is in full swing. So that means effectively we have a year here at the outside as the hard clock on this because justice has guidelines against letting investigations overlap, uh, politically charged investigations overlap into election periods. Now, we're not going to talk about 2016. Speaking of iPads and phones getting seized and all yeah. the ways that could go wrong, we see you, Anthony Weiner. Um <laughs> It, it just you might remember, right? Like Comey, it's all done and the story is over. And then Comey comes back to get the iPad Anthony is using that he took from Uma that also had a copy from her cloud, and it reopens the whole story like 10 days out from the election in bizarro fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what the, these guidelines are meant to avoid and presumably will in this case. So I do think we have a sense of the the, the outside clock, but but things have moved very quickly to this point. They could continue moving quickly. There could be nothing at all. And then just an announcement, uh, 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 you know, this, this investigation is closed at some point. Um, I'm not presuming anything. We'll see. Uh, but it's not going to hang over the uh, the primary. And I assume it'll actually get closed up in time for these people who are speculating about what they're going to do to make a, a decision about whether to get all the way in or all the way out. And, of course, this is about Adam's fundraising. It's about straw donors in part. And he has yeah. a huge fundraising lead coming into this next cycle, both within the campaign finance program which caps what you can spend, and in terms of oh, presumably having his outside operation built up and ready to go that nominally can't coordinate, uh, but exists outside of those parameters. I have a very like technical question, and if anyone listening works for the FBI or knows, when they seize your phone, do they like are they do they go through everything? Do they copy the whole thing to like a hard drive? So we're looking at pictures, signal messages, screenshots, the hidden photos on your you know. What do we got here? Because I am so intrigued by the text between the mayor and other people that have nothing to do, presumably, with this investigation. That's that's my nosy, um, you know. I, I was talking to a friend like, I would hate to have my phone seized for nothing criminal at all. Just like pettiness, meanness, you know, God, whatever. Um all that kind of stuff. But I don't know how it works. I don't know if they just like clean, like completely take it. Like, wouldn't the mayor be afraid they put something on his phone too? I, I get all, I have a lot of questions. Oh, and all this comes, of course, after the mayor allegedly told, and there's been a series of overlapping wiretaps involving both the uh, Manhattan local prosecutor, Alvin Bragg, and, and now the federal prosecutor, Damien Williams. But Adams allegedly told Eric Ulrich, his buildings commissioner, yes. who didn't last six months because it turns out putting like a um, a confessed alcoholic gambler into the number one corruption position. FDNY is not that far down the list, by the way, which is who he, Adams evidently reached out to here. Because if you need a building open, talk to anyone who has a daycare or a small business or anything, this was going to be a student dorm. Uh, look at how this has played out, by the way, with the homeless shelters. Like the FDNY has to sign off and certify things are safe or they do not move forward. And yeah. so if you have somebody who's able to just put in that call and say, hey, can you look at this thing? This seems pressing. That's huge. And the space between constituent service and corruption is impossibly narrow at this yeah. point. And disturbingly, that means uh, th th this really does play into when, when, when somebody is targeted and when that person is the city's second black mayor saying, why me? Why for this? We'll see how this case develops, what charges, if any, actually emerge. Right now, it is all smoke. We can't see the fire. Um, 
but but you do have these these fascinating judgment call questions about what you want to prove is a crime. And by the way, as SDNY keeps getting its ass handed to them, most recently on Brian Benjamin, who did what to me seemed like nakedly corrupt things. Those charges are all dismissed Um, because of the Supreme Court interpretation. He's now only charged with covering up the things he did that, however nakedly corrupt they may seem to Harry Siegel, are certified kosher legal um, because he did not explicitly do a public act favor in exchange for the big contributions he received from developers who wanted things from him. Yeah, It's dizzy. Yeah. Katie, uh, can we get some closing words about uh closing about words. what's wrong? What's wrong with the uh with the geniuses at the press shop? <laughs> what's right about New York City and what we should be looking at this week? I you know, I think what I said what's wrong is sometimes a lot of it is probably out of their control. Um and you know, yeah, they're kind of running scared, not to quote the former village voice. Um column was good with new york city i love the cold weather so it's very cold this morning and i'm enjoying it we have thanksgiving coming up um which means we'll have an opportunity to follow the mayor around uh as he attends the blowing up of the balloons which is always fun which is two years ago he told me at that balloon blowing up event something that's i've used this clip quite often uh since quite frequently since is the mayor said i'm this is going to be the most transparent administration the press is going to be so proud of how transparent i am um maybe do they blow them up with hot air maybe that's what it felt like at the time you can't actually see through those balloons um <laughs> I, I didn't know that the people who work at macy's are mad involved in the parade and setting all that up i was talking to somebody who worked there for a decade who was telling me about that and that's like their giant time of the year like when i worked at tower and you're doing inventory yeah, or whatever. But well, like, there's a lot of lot of work to get done getting giant balloons in the air. And they do, you know, a lot of that. Like, they they hold the balloons too. They they mm-hmm. volunteer for that. But anyway, that's that. So Thanksgiving's coming up. Many years ago, I recorded a Thanksgiving song because there was really no Thanksgiving music. So maybe we could play it on the pod. Tune in. Stay <laughs> tuned. F A Q. F A Q N Y C is part of the city a nonprofit, nonpartisan newsroom dedicated to hard-hitting journalism that serves the people of New York. Here at the city, we're in the middle of our year-end fundraising campaign. If you enjoy listening to FAQ NYC, the best way you can support us is by setting up a monthly recurring donation by going to thecity.nyc slash give. If you already have a monthly donation set up but want to make a special one-time gift, you can also do that at thecity.nyc slash give. As ever, all of our work is freely available to everyone at the city's website. And the pod also receives support from PT Knitwear, an independent bookstore, cafe, and event space on Manhattan's Lower East Side with a podcast studio that can be freely reserved for community use. We're a proud member of the Brickhouse Cooperative of Independent Journalists, Critics, and Artists, and are affiliated with the Colin Powell School at CUNY City College, where co host Chrissy Greer is one of the Moynihan Public Scholars inaugural fellows. Our hosts this episode were me, Katie Honan, and Harry Siegel, who's also our executive producer. Our engineer is Adam Kamara. Thank you, listener, for joining us and making it this far. Be kind, be cool, and we'll be back soon with more.